second song, uh, Not Unclean, uh, is a new song. It's taken from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord and He heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit and established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth, praise to my God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Um, I remember the first time that I ever performed that. It was also uh, at the same church in Las Vegas, oddly enough, um, where I'd, I'd gotten the idea for Jesus Eyes. And a woman walked up to me afterwards and said, I love that Psalm 40. She knew right away which Psalm it was even. And, and uh, I remember thinking that's interesting because I would forgotten which one it was. So that's how come I remember what it is now? Um, because someone else said it to me. And uh, I had written that uh, guy 12 years prior. Uh, I was pastoring a church in California and I wrote most of the praise songs for the church. And I started the, the psalm process where I started taking every single psalm and writing a song to it. And no, I didn't get to 40. <laughs> I didn't get to 40. But I was in the process and then I read that and I sat there and I went, uh, um, this would make a really good acapella thing for everybody to do. And I, I you know, I wrote it and uh, um, taught it to the church. And, and the church met in my house and we would stand, you know, sometimes in a circle during parts of worship or for group prayer. And I remember we all joined hands in a circle after prayer one night and we all sang, you know, we sang the song and I remember how moving that was, how incredibly moving it was. And I said, this is a really powerful song and, and, and all of it is scripture. I, I think I, you know, I molded some words to make them flow, but, um, I, I love the song and it was one of the first songs that I tried recording um, on the Pro Tools uh, knockoff that I had on my computer before my computer died and uh, I always wanted to do it in a round and we did it in a round as a group um, <clears throat> and uh, I just remember when I heard it and that was like really the first song that I heard my my new voice on you know the, the voice that I was starting my record with and I, I have some of those original recordings and I, I sound like Cat Stevens and I, I, I kept that to myself. I said, I'm not going to tell anybody I sing like Cat Stevens because I've heard all my records and, and now I don't. But um, I, I kept my mouth shut and I waited to see if anyone would ever say it and people said it and it made me feel so good. I was so excited. Um, Cat Stevens is without a doubt my favorite male vocalist of all time. I know that's really cheesy and I should have some really trained opera singer or something, but um, Cass Stevens and James Taylor uh, sang me to sleep at night for years. <laughs> they just don't know it. <laughs> and uh, New Song was great. I, I, I love New Song on the record, um, but it was a bitch to perform live with tracks. Oh my gosh. It was impossible. I never ever did it right. No matter what I did, I came in at the wrong time and I, I messed the song up and I just pretended it was supposed to sound like that. And no one ever came up to me and said, oh, that's like your best song. Oh, that's your best song. And that, that never happened. And uh, I finally took it out of the set because it was so bad. And then I put it back in the set with just a drum track without the, the harmony tracks. Um, and it was horrible and uh, I think the only time I ever performed it that I thought it was good live was when I played uh, Glendale Glitters which is like the Christmas weeks uh, here in Arizona and I performed on the street in front of a tattoo shop and I remember I was there one night and I was playing and I turned off my iPod and you know, there were just people everywhere and there were people on the street and cars pulling up and and I just remember, you know, just for the you know, the first time just going, I waited patiently for the Lord and I just darted out into the street and I just I did David man. I all but stripped down to my underwear and danced through the street 
praising God and I went, now the song makes sense. This is when the song makes sense. No music, sure as hell no drums and crappy backup vocals, but just as what it was, a psalm as a proclamation of faith and love and hope and, and uh, uh, easily, hands down, one of my favorite performances in my history was a uh, new song uh, in the middle of the street of Glendale. <laughs> yep. Them were the days. I keep thinking that uh, new song's gonna show up uh, on uh, another one of my records, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, it showed up on. Uh, gosh, I, I, I think it popped up on Zombies in a in a new twisted format, and and it was funny because it was the. It was the, uh, all those screw-ups uh, that really showed me that if I had recorded it as an experimental piece where it wasn't supposed to sound perfect, it would have been a lot easier to do live. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm currently working on uh, um, a really, really strange performance piece called, uh, that's me calling it strange. I, I don't think you're supposed to call your own work strange. I'm working on a, a powerful, unique, and provocative new performance piece called Hey Lucifer, uh, uh, Songs from the Lake of Fire. And uh, I, I think I'm gonna bring back new song for that. I think it'd be really fun to have that, have that show up in a setting. And it was really fun to perform. Uh, I just wish I could have done it better all those years. Uh, the next song on the record is uh, the infamous Jesus Eyes, uh, and when I wrote Jesus Eyes, I really thought it was going to be like, like the closing song, like the encore, the anthem, where you know I get you know a room full of people, you know, just going, you know, Jesus Eyes, there are no that, or, you know. And I did that, I did that, for, you know, so often. I had no idea it was gonna become like the centerpiece of my ministry. I had no idea that over and over again I would revisit the themes of, of people being alienated by, by the church and thus thinking they're being rejected by God. I had no idea. I had no idea that was gonna be my future. Um, I love my future. It's the greatest work on the planet to let people who walk around believing that God hates them, to let them know that's not true. Uh, tell me what a better job is as a Christian minister. It's, it's the bomb. And and boy, I did that song to death. I mean, I had that's what happens with the title track. You have to do it at every show. At every show, you have to do the title track on your record. And when we were recording it, it was very problematic. Um, I, if you listen to it, a lot of it's out of time. A lot of it's out of time. Uh, meaning my, my musicianship is out of time. Um, and uh, there were a lot of problems. That, that song became like Franken's song. There's a lot of edits. There's a lot of edits in it where we splice together takes that worked and takes that didn't. And, and, uh, um, and, and I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, people always ask me, do you listen to your records and cringe? And I'm like, well, first off, I don't listen to my records uh, if I don't have to. Um, and yet, I, I, I will not cringe ever. I listen to them and I accept exactly what we did, exactly what's there, because I know at the time I did the best I could do with what I had to work with and the time I had to work in. And the song, Jesus Eyes, definitely could have been different. Um, but I think it's really cool the way it is. I think it suits the record. It suits as a uh, snapshot reflection of the time. And uh, I wouldn't change a hair on that baby's head. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just might take stronger uh, prenatal vitamins next time. Ha, 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 ha.